it's all right. He's got, um, he's pretty funny too. Um, and so the reason why I'm, he was talking about the Christmas sites, I mean, I told him, he, I told him why I want you to come up and speak for an hour if you want to. And so he's going to make you want to grow your business, right? He's got that power. He's got that influence. And so um, I want you all to grow your business. Who all wants to grow your business? Because if you don't, get out. Right. Um, that's the whole purpose. So, Chris is, um, he grew up in a little town called I Don't Know. Um, he's been around, he's about 200 pounds at a hundred, five foot two. No, I don't know anything about him. I'm just making complete stuff up. But here's Chris. All right, guys. Has everybody enjoyed it so far? Yes. I guess so. One people, one people, one people have. Singular and plural, you know. That's crazy, ain't it? One person has enjoyed it. So has anybody enjoyed so far what they've learned? Yeah, absolutely. Have you learned anything that's gonna help you? Can you implement one thing you've learned so far? Just one thing, change your business. If you don't, you wasted fifteen hundred dollars. And your motel stay, which was around five hundred. So you blow two grand. <laughs> two sixty if you're in a ghetto. I can find a whole lot better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a road you can get on this two sixty. No, so, <laughs> so guys, everybody has an ink pen, right? Does everybody have a pen? Yes, if you don't get one from somewhere before we start. Because we gotta be uh, interactive on this deal. I am an interactive guy, I'm a people person. Um, we're gonna have conversations. I love conversations and role playing. It helps you. So I can do some role playing with you. There you go. That'll be good. Um, so, I don't know if you know what you're doing. I do. I'll keep him on. I'll keep him on wraps because my camera's on and it ain't. All that ain't gonna be on my camera. I want you to teach me some of that biker role play. Yeah. All right. Hey, but uh. You know, we all got past lives and we all had to learn from mistakes. And even in your business, the way you look today will not be the way you look five years from now. You will be totally transformed into a totally new person. If you don't, your business will not be any different than it is today. Just quit and go work at Walmart. You'd be happier doing that. If you ain't growing and learning, you're in the wrong field. So. Guys, here's the reality of it. How do we win at sales? Number one, you gotta admit one thing. You're the problem. And you're the solution. If you don't acknowledge these two items, you will never win in the area of sales. Because it's not, what's his name, Niz? Nick. Nick, <laughs> like a Z on me. <laughs> So, I can't blame Nick because I suck at sales. Donovan can't blame his office manager because he can't land a job. If you can't sell, it is your fault. But if you learn how to sell, it becomes your fault when you're successful. How many people would rather own the ladder? I would rather own the ladder. I'd rather know I'm the solution and I fix what I have jacked up or not learned, not been intentional with. How many people would rather be the problem? How many people in here today, by show of hands, so he's got guts, would say they know they are the problem? I'm my biggest problem. I am too. And I'm a great freaking salesman. And I'm my biggest problem. I don't care how good you get at the issue, every day you get up, if you don't acknowledge you're the problem and fix that solution throughout the day, you will end up at the end of the day saying, man, I went to 10 customers and sold nothing. Why? Because you never acknowledged you were the problem from the word go and look for solutions every time you meet a new customer. Mm -hmm. Every new customer presents a new problem. You gotta find the solution every time you meet a customer. It's not cookie cutter. So, everybody's got this sheet in front of them. And everybody's got an ink pen. 
Now I want to ask you, how many squares do you see on this paper? And I want you to write it on the paper. When you figure out how many squares are on your paper, I want you to write it down and let me know how many you see. How many you got? I'll give everybody a couple minutes to get that done. It has to be a square or can be a rectangle? No, it has to be a square. Yeah. Did you get one done? <laughs> are some of these lines that are grayed out? I'll carve it into my desk. I'll write no, it. all the lines are, even the ones that are grayed out are lines. I don't know why it printed that way. But you can kind of look at it from here. So when you get your numbers, I want everybody to get done with it. And when you're done, just kind of let me know. That way we kind of know who's done. You done? 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 Done, done? All right. Who's still working on it? Okay, yeah. keep going. <clears throat> Everybody still working? <clears throat> Everybody done? Okay. Can I borrow your pen? Yes, sir. I'm going to do one in front of everybody. How many got 20? By show of hands. How many at least got 20 squares? 20 all at least. 20, tw at least 20. How many got 25? 25? How many got 26? How many got 27? Yeah. How many got 28? Okay, cool. How many got 29? How many got 30? You got 30? Wrote on your paper? I did. Yeah. Yeah. No. You're the only one that won. Really? Damn. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna try to do this for everybody to see, but I don't know if it's gonna be possible. Here you go. Oh, oh, oh. How can we do it? Okay. <laughs> so you got one, right? Yeah. You know there's 16 in the middle. That's 17. Okay. Now that's 18. That's 19. That's 20. 21. 20, I mean, I should have went over three. 22, is that right? Yeah. 23, uh, 24, 25. All right, you ready? 26 here in the middle. 27 in the middle. 28, 29, and then in the dead center, That's what I missed. 30. 30 squares in that box of 16. 30. So here's the thought. And here's the, here's, the, here's, the, here's the premise behind that. It's time for a mind shift. How you view things is how you will have. Your life will lay out the way you view it. That is a fact. Every person in this room is where you are because that's exactly how you view your life. Whether you admit that or not is irrelevant. True. Let that sink in a minute. How you view your life is why your life is the way it is right now. now that's a hard pill to swallow. The first time I chewed that pill, I choked. I thought I'd die. Because my life sucked. So I'm going to give you a little bit about my life. <clears throat> so in 2005, February 5th, 2005, uh, I got saved by the grace of God and, and my life changed. Eight years prior to that, I was introduced to a drug called cocaine. And so for eight years, man, I get emotional. I'm a crying dude, but I love it. God's been good to me. But for eight years, over eight years, I've become a full-fledged drug addict. 
where my life depended on whether I had drugs to get up, drugs to go to bed, drugs to function, drugs to have sex, drugs to drink, drugs to eat. I had to have drugs for everything in my life. <clears throat> and I had nothing. I lost everything I ever had in life because friends influenced me to go in a way that was going to destroy my life. If you hang around friends that are pulling you down, rather than if they tell you you don't have the opportunity to do anything, son, cut them jokers off. I don't care if it's family. I don't care if it's daddies and mamas. If my mama looked at me and said, son, I don't think you're going to make it, I wouldn't even speak to her again. That's how deadhead I am. Oh, I'm going to be around people to influence me to do good and go for it and take it. Quit hanging around a bunch of losers, man, that don't want you to be successful. That man over here lives 40 minutes from me. He's a competitor. I want him to be a freaking millionaire. I want him to win. I want you to win. But you're not going to win. If your mindset is always negative, 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 negative. If everybody's pulling you down, pulling you down, pulling you down, and you never cut those strings, you'll never grow. You can't fly with strings holding you down with anchors on. 2005, my life changed. My mindset didn't a whole lot, but my, mind, but my life did. It took years to change my mindset. <clears throat> Because I struggled hanging around the same people, same crowd. I had to break all that and leave and move and get away so that I could start growing and learning. Guys, you got to realize when I got saved, now listen, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to teach you something here now. And then we're going to get into some sales because I, I love sales. I love it. I get off drugs, me and my wife and my beautiful daughter. She's little at this time. I mean, man, she's little. She's two years old. Three. We move for the Lord, you know, and I get away from the crowd I'm around. Get around nothing but Christian people and godly influences, and, and we're doing it. And the place I moved to, I know nobody but church people. And I lose my job. Because I drove a church bus on Saturday and picked up a lot of ghetto kids. Kids from dope head houses took them to church and played basketball with them and fed them cupcakes and taught them about the goodness of God and how you can have a different life than you live in now. And I lost my job because of that. And so for the next three years, this is how I started my pressure washing business. It's very emotional to me. Because when I started my business, I had done nothing. We lived in a camper. That leak when it rained on your head if you sat in the couch. You had to sit on the bed or the couch would leak, so we had to put plastic over. My wife and daughter had to walk 180 yards to the bathhouse to use the bathroom <clears throat> or take a shower in dirt. Man, I've come a long way. And so have you. You look back at the school of hard knocks and the things you've been through in life, it's all lessons. It's lessons to prepare you for the next journey. Life is a journey, Chris. It's a journey. Everything is a journey and it's a lesson. And you have to learn from this lesson to be prepared for this lesson. Today's a journey for you. Today's a step in the right direction to get you on another level. But guys, I borrowed $500. And I would literally park at the end of a neighborhood because I had no money for gas. And I would walk door to door. And I would just literally ask people, can I, can I wash your house? See, desperation produces an emotional reaction. When you get desperate enough, you will do whatever it takes. The reason we don't do what it takes is because we're not hungry enough. We're not desperate enough. We don't have enough. Our why is not big enough. How is irrelevant if my why is big enough? You got to get hungry. You gotta get desperate. You gotta have a burning desire to be better tomorrow than you were today. Or you're gonna remain the problem. And if your mindset don't shift 
and begin a winner's mindset, you will always be what you are today. Now that may be a decent guy, a decent girl, decent husband, decent wife, decent dad. <clears throat> but if you don't have a mindset shift to be exceptional, you'll never be exceptional because average sucks. I know it's quiet and I know everybody, it's a somber, it's a somber meeting because I want you to literally get it. That's why I'm so passionate about it. What I'm doing right now, I love with every fiber of my body from my head to my toe. I want you to win. Not at all costs because that's what crooks do. Win at every cost. Mindset shift. Who's ready for a mindset shift? <clears throat> Hallelujah. Who's ready to jump off the deep end? Let's learn how to capitalize on emotional sales, on behavioral analysis, on, on man, every way that you can penetrate the feelings and the emotion from a customer and gain a win. I'm an emotional salesman. I play off of emotions. I play off disc profiles and love languages. I love that stuff. How many people have ever taken a disc profile in this room? By show of hands. Okay. How many people in here have ever taken the love language test? How many people in here will go take it tonight and tell us tomorrow what yours is? <laughs> Depends on what it is. It doesn't matter what it is. No, there's no good. And that's a lot of people's thoughts, but that's not the way it goes. There's no right or wrong. There is no right or wrong answer. If you're a high S, baby, that's who you are. It'd take you years to change that. And hard focus. Be who you are. But you need to learn the disc profile because you need to know what Nick is when you're talking to him. You need to know what this Nick, to Nick. Nick to death. Nick, 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 Nick. Hey, but listen, guys, you need to understand when you're talking to Nick, I need to read this guy. I need to read his body language. I need to understand how he's thinking before I ever make him a presentation. You need to learn that in the first 30 seconds of an interview. <clears throat> you got 30 seconds to get that narrowed down where I understand he's probably a high S. Or a high C. I've never spoke to him. And when he takes the test tonight, I'd almost bet you my paycheck I'm right. What test is it? It is. A D disc I profile. D -I Tony Robbins has one online. It's free. D-I-S-C. -I -I Take it tonight and it will help you in your sales. Yes, it will. If you learn the disc and learn the five love languages, there's actually seven for employees. But you need to just take it. Take the five love language test. Know what your love language is. Know your disc profile. And study those two things until you know what they are verbatim without looking. What was that guy's name? Tony Robbins. He's a great motivational speaker. One of the greatest motivational speakers of all time. Highest paid man in the world on motivational speaking. It's Tony Robbins. So take that. Need to know who he is. He's speaking. He's a big dude. He's a, he is a big That dude joker's eating big as you is dog. But so take both of them. Take both of them and it will revolutionize your thoughts of how you approach a customer. See guys, because when you come into a customer's world, you need to know, Mason, how they how they respond to your questions. I am an assertive, aggressive alpha male. I am an ultimate high I and a high D. That's an influencer and a dominator. Those are my two personality traits. There are 100s. My systemizing and my compassion is way down in zero. It's like a two. Literally, it's down here and the other one's up here. So I know what I am. So when I roll up on a cut on a customer or Brandy, and I can tell Brandy's just for example, she's timid, she's standoffish, she's quiet, she's reserved. And she asked me, well, what kind of chemicals are you using on my thing? And she's, you know, 55 years old. And she's like, what kind of chemicals are you using today? 
That lets me know she's a C. She's a C. That means she's very cautious. She's very, very, very informationally driven. <coughs> she has to know, am I going to hurt your road bush? Is, your plate, is it going to kill my azalea? Is it, when they start asking these questions, that profile rises right up for me, and I all of a sudden know I can't talk to Brandy the same way I talk to Brandon. It ain't gonna work. So Chris has to turn it off. I have to shift my mindset in the fly, on the fly, on the move. I have to be going, ba ba boom, boom. Hey, Brandy, how are you? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna take real good care of you. And I have to get real low toned. And I have to talk to Brandy. And I said, Brandy, we're gonna take such good care of you. We're gonna put plastic over your bushes. We're gonna make sure we get your mailbox on the way out. We're not gonna leave any room for the HOA to come back and talk to you like they did last week. I'm building her value up in her mind because I know how to talk to her. Guys, if you don't have, if you talk to every customer the same, you're never gonna win 80% of them. You're not gonna have a 50% close rate. You're gonna have a 20 because you're missing the 30 to 40 percent that you should have talked to just a tweak different it's tweaks it's not massive things brandy just wants to know we're going to cover stuff up we're using chemical that's green and we're not going to kill her plants and can her dog come out when you leave how many people ever ask can my dog come out when you're done that is a high c baby because i promise you i don't care if my dog runs through your bleach. <laughs> I don't. I just don't, I don't care. I don't care if it's oil on the ground. The dog's okay. <laughs> but a high C, that's gonna rock their world. I mean, it's gonna flip. So you gotta hear what they're saying, pick up on those small tones, the little questions. A high S is gonna ask you stuff like um, your systems, like, how does this work? How does this work? And, and it's more systemized and they're more sympathetic. They're more, they're more compassionate than I am. Um, but you gotta pick up on those tones. A high I is an influencer. You walk up to a high I and that joker meets you in the yard and he says, Bo, what you think about it in your truck? <laughs> but you like that? That's got, and he wants to show you his truck. <laughs> oh, he's a high I, I'm all for that dude. I me and him click. Like two birds, I'm, I'm telling you, we birds are the same feather. <laughs> and I know how to talk to him. You know what I do to high eye? I stroke him. Man, you got a beautiful house. Dear Probably God, you ought to put this all over Facebook. Man, you ought to have your house on Instagram. I mean, you ought to be everywhere. Look at this house. I'm, in, I'm influencing him because that's what he loves. A high D, that jerk is like, what's the price? I, mean, I ain't got time for this crap. Man, I got to work. Come on. <laughs> and literally, they're assertive. They're not meaning to be. When he, look, when he opens the door and he's like, my wife called you. Okay, just can you just give me a price? Well, it's going to be 20, 30 minutes. 20 or 30 minutes? Oh my God. You're talking to a high D. So you got to address him. Chris, he don't need the details because he don't care about line items. He don't care about a 30-minute dissertation on what I'm going to He don't care. My wife wants it. I'm paying for it. Where do I sign <laughs> Honestly, a high D don't even care about the price. He just wants to know how to get you off my porch so I can go back to doing what I was doing because I was watching a football game and you interrupted me and I want to go back. That is how it works. Guys, if you'll learn these disc profiles, it'll help you in your sales. I'm here today talking about sales. That will help you in your sales. Now, motivation to serve others. This is number two. The measure of a man's greatness is not the number of servants he has, but the number of people he serves. Guys, let me ask you a question. We dealt with this last night a little bit. He was in here with us a little bit last night. And I want to ask you something. And I want whoever to answer, you can answer. Interact with me. You can tell I'm very interactive. How do you approach your customer? With love. With love, okay. Do you try to sell them everything you offer? No. Why? Not right. They don't offer good they stuff. They, if they offer good stuff, they'd be trying to sell them everything. Amen. If I believe what I sold to customers, 
Bonnie, I don't for everything. Okay. Everything. What do you do? Uh, rent bounce houses. Rent bounce houses. You got the best bounce houses they got? You got the best customer service? You got the best response rate? You got the best pickup times, courteous? Yeah. Do you believe that? Yeah. Then you should have all that told to your customers in some way, shape, or form that you're the best there is in the bounce house business, period. And you got to believe it. Because if you can serve others by believing what you offer, then you're a service business. If all you are is a dictator business and you tell 50 people to go do crap, you're a master of servants. You're not a servant of people. There's a total difference. I serve my men that work with me. They don't work for me. They work with me. They're my teammates. And we roll like a team. And when this truck's behind and, and battered and this guy's done, he goes helps a teammate. If I had to jump on a truck, I'd jump on a truck and help a teammate. If I got teammates down and something's going on in their home, I lean in, I serve them. My guys have worked hard all week and I know at Friday at two o'clock I can come in and I can get there earlier than they do because I can schedule my appointments. And if I can have ribs on the grill or Boston butts on the grill, but we're eating at two o'clock at my house cooking breakfast for them and I'm saying thank you guys for being on team with me man I couldn't do it without you that's the way you got to feel about your customers your customers are prospect well they're suspects prospects and cut and clients okay now a suspect is just that that's a suspect I'm tattooed up just like these other guys I'm, I'm tattooed all over my body too all down my legs and it ain't cool Superman hero stuff <laughs> My jokes of death and skulls and fire. You know what I mean? And so, think about it. I look like a suspect. Suspect, suspect. Yeah, real suspect. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a real one. You know, I walk up. Turn if, to the right. If I, ain't got my, if I ain't got my fresh washing shirt on, you know, and I'm walking through your yard looking, you know, taking pictures, I look like somebody put a case in your house. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, ring doorbell comes on. Who is that joker in my yard? I don't know. Don't say nothing. Claire, go over to the guard. Yeah, call the authorities. Don't go outside. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, I mean, I got, I mean, I tow the weapon all the time. And I got to Sometimes I, I forget to take it out because I'm off duty. <laughs> I'm not working and somebody calls for a crazy quote and I got the car and I got a 45 strap on my side and I'm walking in these house. I look like a suspect. Guys, that ain't who we talking about. We talking about the prospects that you want to make them clients and you want to make them part of your family. Now, those people, you need to, you need to serve. Serve those people at another level, you treat a suspect like a suspect. That's the one-star reviews. That's the suspects. That's the people giving you one-star because they said you cut them off on the highway. That's the one-star because you threw a flyer in their yard. Those are not our customers. The prospects, when you get to their house, if you come with a mindset of a servant, and I literally believe every line item on my paper and there's a lot more I do now. This is a this is my one I use currently, but I'm updating it before January. We're fixing to get into this. But every person I serve, I offer them everything I can give them. Because I want to serve them at a high level. I've made the mistake a couple times of going in and I'm presenting to Brandon, and I say, Brandon. Here's your thing, buddy. We're going to clean your windows. We got your concrete wash on here. We got your house wash, your deck wash. I got all this on there. And I'm done. And I want it, Chris. We're done. I mean, I got three grand. I get it from the table, and he's like, you know, I heard about some ceiling on driveways. I didn't mention that. But I offered Why didn't I mention it? You, you, you get what I'm saying? Y'all, is it resonating with you? Why didn't I mention that? They literally wanted it, and I didn't even offer it. It's something I do, Mason. Why didn't I give it to them up front, Chris? Why? why? I'll call your name, but I can't reach a tag. 
<laughs> but I like calling names. I do. I like interacting with people. But this is what you got to do with your customers. You got to interact with them. You got to get them to loosen up. But in that deal, you got to offer them everything you give, or you're doing a disservice to your customer. That's a fact. Do you know why I put out yard signs so readily? Because I believe if I don't, I'm doing a disservice to my community. And that's my competitor back there. He's my buddy. But I'm the meanest, greenest, pressure washing, soft wash guy in Woody <laughs> County, period. I want to see y'all fight. I believe it. <laughs> it would be it would be fun. It'd be. By, by, by the way, we're in Georgetown. We, we, <laughs> <laughs> we are in Georgetown. We are in Georgetown. He is in Georgetown. That's why I can say that. You know why we live in? No. <laughs> No, I ain't gonna drive for Chris, man. My knees is bad, my back hurts. <laughs> that jerk would be getting me make train. I ain't, man, I'm, I'm 43. I ain't doing that crap no more. That's why I took a gun. <laughs> I don't run, I ain't fighting. But no, in all honesty, guys, if you believe with all your heart that what you offer a customer is the very best, then you should offer everything. You should offer everything you do with confidence. That I'm serving you at a high level, Nick. I want you to have the very best I can give you. What time did I start, Jason? I like you 12 o'clock. Yeah, you got plenty of time. You can drive beer in the spot. Now, here's here's the last slide I've got, and then we're gonna do some exercises real quick. And these exercises will help you understand the mindset yeah. I'm talking about. Maintain consistent routines. Has anybody ever seen anything like this or, or heard anything like this with cues and responses and rewards? Has anybody ever? Yeah. Um, all right, so a cue like is, is what kicks it off, okay? Like if I say, hey, when they come in, will you, will you make sure that they're well prepared with food, okay? Can you do that? What was the cue? When they, when they, when they come in. That's your cue. When that door opens and they come in, that's your cue. That's your time to roll. Everything we do in life has a cue. Whether it's good or bad, it doesn't matter. Good or bad, every habit you have, everything you do starts with a cue. Something triggered it. You need to install good cues to, to get good routines to get great results. If you've got bad habits, how many people in this room have bad habits? Everybody. If you didn't raise your hand, you liar. That's a bad habit. We all have bad habits. How many people watch too much TV? I mean, be honest, raise your hand. Come on, please, give up. Come on. I watch too much TV. We Netflix being sometimes like, dear God, I got you. how many more NCIS can I watch? You wanna know how to kill that cue? When do you watch TV? At night, when you come in, right after dinner, right before dinner, right it's the same every day. I promise you it is. Yeah, exactly. How many people here smoke? He smokes. How many other people smoke? He smokes. You right smoke on. every time you eat dinner? Yeah. Every time you eat a meal? Yep. Every time? You smoke every time you get in a car? Yeah. Like every freaking time. Yeah. <laughs> Clockwork. It's like, bam, bam. You can't help it. You got to get credit. I quit for like, you know. Yeah, but you're smoking now. Really? Credit got the nut. <laughs> Credit got the nut. It's what you're doing, not what you did. <laughs> I mean, I used to work out and be express. I don't need more. That's why I ain't wrestling Chris. I ain't doing it. Or him. I ain't wrestling him either. That's a big joker that's running that sweater. <laughs> but honestly, guys, the cues are what trigger the routine. How many people know what shoe they put on first? Which one? Left. Try tomorrow morning to put the right one on. <laughs> no way. No, I'm dead serious. I challenge you. I'll challenge you right here. You want to jack up your life? I mean, seriously. I mean, now, now, when I mean jack it up, I mean elevate that joker. I mean, you really want to get your mind kicked off in the right way tomorrow morning. Stand up, and when you go to put your pants in your leg, you're going to automatically, without thought, subconsciously pick up the leg you use every day. When you do that, stop and put it back on the ground and do the other one. You will almost have to sit down. 
Now I can stand on either leg. It don't make no difference. But when you try to put the other leg in that pants leg first, your brain <laughs> is going to get scrambled. <laughs> I challenge you. I'm trying to imagine that my brain's are. These are the cues I'm talking about. If you want a different result, you got to institute different cues, different plans, different actions. So if you want to change something, start with that. Put the other leg in your pants in the morning, Chris, and you'll just about fall down. I'm telling you, the first time I tried it, I fell down. I did. I was like, dude, this is not, and I went down, but not too far from the ground. I know, praise God, it's the leg. The leg. And I got a little cushion on the back now. I wasn't caught for a while. He does all the time. I'm going to get on his shoulders in a minute. We're going to do some sky tail. I'm going to hit that ceiling. I can't do it without that. Now, when you get your pants on, I want you to put your shoes on. But when you pick up the first shoe to put it on, put it back down and pick the other one up. Now, how many people put both socks on before they put their shoes on? How many people put one sock on and a shoe and then one sock in a shoe? Try to put both socks on in the morning. <laughs> hey, if you put on both socks in the morning, try to put the opposite sock on and then the opposite shoe and then the other sock and shoe. Here's what you're doing. You're instituting cues. You are really racking your brain. By, the, by three or four of these intentional changes, you have triggered so many things in your head that's going off, it will alter your whole day. That's what we got to do when it comes to sales. We are so programmable that we say the same thing, Bonnie. We say the same thing. We say the same thing. We do the same thing. And we don't pick up on the cues the customer's giving us. So we can't pivot. You can't pivot because you just, I'm, 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 I'm in my routine. Don't shake up my routine. I got to tell the whole story. No, you don't. Try the shoes. Try the pants. Try the socks. Get used to change. Change is inevitable. And if you can institute change in your life on those small areas, if the TV's a problem, unplug it. That way when you have to the urge to watch TV, I've got to get up. And go plug the stupid thing in and then wait for it to load up. And I got to wait for an internet to set up. And I got to reprogram. And if you still watch TV every day, unplug it, pull a little strap behind it, take it off the mount, and go put it in the garage. <laughs> and then when you want to watch TV, you got to go get it out of the garage. You got to put it back on the stinking wall. Now I got to plug it in. Then I got to sit down and wait on it for 10 minutes to load up. Are you going to do that? No. No. But if you got a book sitting beside you that says How to Win Friends and Influence People and the TV's in the garage, it's easier to just pick up the book. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? Make the cues to do good, the cues to learn, the cues to educate, the cues to motivate. Make those cues so easily available and make the hard cues so hard to do. When it's a bad cue that creates a bad routine that's going to give you a bad reward, make that cue almost impossible to do. Just move the cue. Is that, is that helping anybody? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Guys, I'm telling you, this stuff is not easy to do. Now, I'm up here preaching, and I'm telling you, this ain't easy living. Chris, this is hard, but This is hard getting up at 4.30 in the morning and going and running when it's thinking rain outside. Because I'm fat and overweight and I can't breathe. And I know I need to go run at 4.30 in the morning because i got to work all day. I just don't want to do it. This ain't easy. When you've worked all night and you get home at night and you know you've told your wife you're going to do something cool for her. And you sit down and watch TV because that's your cue. That's what you do. And then your wife's like, I thought you were going <sighs> to screw that up again. That's where we live. But we got to change the cues. Guys, that's all the slides I've got. Now, I do want to go through this with you, and I want to I build this out for you, and I want to help you with, with some packages and with some sales in this area. So I had a deal. I want everybody, I want everybody to get their phones, get their calculators, get whatever you need out, as if you're sitting in front of me and I'm your customer. I'm going to give you the numbers. 
and I want you to fill out that paper according to what you offer. Now listen, don't do it according to what I just went through. I want you to fill the paper out according to what you would have did last Friday. Don't try to make it fancy like, oh, I'm going to try to impress Tracy and Jason. And no, we don't care. I, I really don't. I want you to be truthful and honest. <coughs> what would you have quoted last Friday? You got a 2,000 square foot house. Write these numbers down so you remember. A 2,000 square foot house. And here's the thing. If you don't do price washing, because I know we got some guys that are doing, you know, lawn care. We got guys that are doing roofing. So we can either do it toward Christmas sites or however you want to do it. Yeah. But I'm just kidding. Either way. You up, uh, we're not, everybody's not doing pressure washers. How many people are not pressure washers? Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you do? Landscaping, Christmas lights. And you do landscaping? Most everybody here is for Christmas lights. And you do? Yeah, lawn care, Christmas lights. All right, so do lawn care for y'all. Do what you would do on lawn care, okay? Um, and do what you would do on bouncy houses. If a customer called you and they wanted four bouncy houses, fill it out. And y'all fill out lawn care. Hey, customer called you, they got an 800 square foot yard. I mean, they live in the subdivision, ain't nothing. It's small, you know what I mean? Just make a number up. Um, and y'all just put it together as what you would give the customer if we, you're on the phone or close them in person. Yeah. No, are we filling out each one or each one? Else? No, we're going to do each one. We got 32 windows. 32 windows. Yep. You got 200 feet of gutters. I'm going to do this as Christmas lights. Yeah, do it. Yeah, do it. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, 200 feet of gutters, so that's your linear feet of gutters. Now you got to figure out your pitch on your, your dormers, you know. Uh, you, you said you're done with slides? Yes. Okay, what type of house are you describing? Just like a 2,000 square foot, just a normal ranch style house with a dormer on top. You'll put a picture Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. With just a normal, you know, second story dormer, you know, yes, talk for it. Nothing major. Nothing major. Uh, 32 windows, 200 foot of gutters. You can put that, those numbers. Yep. Right there, right? 32, gut, 32 windows, 200 foot of gutters, 2,000 square foot house. They got a screen porch that's got 10 screens on it. You tie the pink screens to it? I don't know. Whatever you would do. No, I would not do that. <laughs> and then, um, I was the same thing. and they've got 2,000 uh, square foot of concrete. Now I want you to fill that paper out, whatever you would sell that customer. And write your numbers at the bottom when you're done. No. <laughs> oh no, he does I mean he knows why I'm curious. Hey, he did I know he can, numbers. Yeah, we're fixing to go over that too, because that's the last thing I'm gonna go over, Jason. I'll be done. Oh, no, you're fine, bro. I mean, they ain't got nowhere to go. They gotta be back here in the morning anyway, so we can just keep them all night and all day. <laughs> Where's my phone? I'm gonna look at my hotel. I'll get the number from y'all. Whatever you would offer. Whatever you offer. You. Not whatever whatever yep. else offers. Yeah, whatever you would offer. Please be honest about what you would do. Because that's the only way you're going to get help today is to be honest. You can't be fluffed. Donovan's going to put the picture of the house up for you. Imagine Yeah, that's a good looking house. That would have definitely 32 windows. <laughs> that would have 32. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's not a ranch. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was got 32 windows. I guarantee it. Oh, I guarantee it, too, on my foot. <laughs> Oh, it's got 12 on the front. He said, I guarantee it. It's got 12 on the front. I know it'll have eight or 10 on the side. Is this someone's purse? It's got two on this side. That's the house. If you're, how would you quote that for Christmas lights? Awesome. Christmas lights, landscaping, 
pressure washing. I just want you to give a real part of what you would do. Because that's the only way you're going to learn is to, to challenge what you already do. you got to challenge it, though. Just like putting the other shoe on. It hurts to get out of the comfort zone. It, it shakes your mind up. I'm but you got to know. I know what shoe I put on first in the first place. I'm going to try that. You will subconsciously pick one up every morning, the same one. Oh, I'm sure you're right. Brush your teeth with the opposite hand. Hey, that'll do it too. And stand on the opposite leg. Now, I'm ambidextrous, so this comes a little easier for me. <laughs> While reading a quote that's good for your mind. That is cool. I like it. You should do that. Hey, that's good. Hold the panel that's good. Yeah. How are you? Hold on. Welcome to the party. Thank you. They're the easy seat right here. Right up front. Did he make you drive in this morning? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, that's good. You're just in time. So, what's your name? Melissa, I'm Chris. Nice to meet you. Did you get your order? Yeah. No, this one. Okay, well, that's fine. You can write there. All right, so who's, who's, who's game enough to go over some numbers with me? Okay, go ahead. So for a 2,000 square foot house, I was thinking I'm at 15 cents a square foot. And what's that price? That was 300. Okay. And then uh, for gutters, I'd be at uh, a dollar a foot, so that's 200 dollars. And then for uh, concrete, I'm at 18 cents a square foot, so that's three, that's 360. And then the windows, uh, eight dollars per window. So that's 256. Okay. I came out for 916. So 916. Okay. Now, how do you get your price on your windows? Because when I say 32 windows, that's a double hung. So that's really only 16 windows. So are you at $8 for a double hung or $8 per panel? No, $8 for the whole thing. Okay, I'm at $5 per panel minimum. Okay. So that's $10 a window. Okay. So, but I count it as half and half because when I get to a, a sliding door, I count that sliding door, one door as two panels. Because it's the same size as a double home. It's easier to sell that way because your salesman ain't got to have 14 different window prices. Well, is it 38 feet long or is it 10 feet long? Is so it 20? It's, it's a easy. double pane window, you're five and five. Right. Okay. And if it's a big bay window that's this wide, it's four. Because there's Two here and two here. It's the same size if I had to put two windows side by side. That's four panels, period. And it's easy that way. Your customers ain't never counting their windows. They ain't gonna care anyway. And if they ever ask you, how'd you count them? Say as per pane, and we just make it as a double hung is two panes. And that's how we measure the house. It's easy math. It's easy for salesmen. It's easy to replicate. It's easy to duplicate. There's no different price on windows. Five, six, seven dollars a panel and roll with it. So your price is $900. Yeah. So here's, so let me show you what he didn't quote. Now I don't know if he does it or not, but I'm trying to help you today sell, right? We're yeah. here to make money, right? Oh, we yeah. in business to make money. Absolutely. All right. You didn't talk about gutter clean out at all. Yeah, that's what I, that was my. I was Well, gutter. you didn't talk about gutter yeah. brightening. No, I didn't. Um, so, I said there was 10 windows on the screen porch, right? You didn't even mention the screen porch. Are you going in my screen porch or out of my screen porch? I usually like ask them what before. If they don't mention it, I don't go in. I don't go inside the enclosed area. If it has really nice furniture, what I may not mention it. If it's a screen porch and I can look through the screen porch and I can move three or four pieces of furniture and cover the TV, I'm going in the screen porch, and if they got 10 screens, I'm charging $100 extra for the screen porch. That's how I measure my screen porches. It's real simple. This one's got eight. Now, I'm talking about a, a, a full section screen. You know, they got eight sections. I'm gonna charge $10 a section, and we're gonna clean all the frame, the ceiling, the wall. So the house wash would have been how much? Uh, 300. 300 plus another 100 for the screens. Now I just got you an extra $100 for the same house. Because you're going in there anyway. Right. Why not make an extra $100 for going in there? You wouldn't charge for going in there. I do. 
My house washes exterior only. If I go in the screen porch, I'm less per screen. Right. That's how I measure. I don't have to Google Earth to measure. It's per screen. I have a question. Yes. What if there's siding on the inside of the house? You don't go in there and clean that? No. Not unless they pay extra for screen porch cleaning. Okay. That's my no. house. No. Okay. Mm -mm. No, I don't. Even if the, I'm talking about the wall from the house. No. Not the screen itself. No. I don't touch it. That's screen porch. Yeah, I was going to say that's not longer an exterior wall. Too, right. It's a locked screen door is the way I view that door. I view it as an exterior door. Okay. Unless they pay me to go in the screen, I stay exterior. Okay. I'm just talking about ways to get you to uptick any little uptick you can do is going to up the value of your ticket. This is how I... This goes for Christmas lights too, right? Yeah, anything. We're, we're not just going to put... I just want to give an outline, right? We're going to give an outline. We're going to do a wreath. We're going to do ground lighting. We're going to do trees. We're going to do bushes. You know, this is... If they only come for one thing, we're going to give them everything. Yes. You put, right. the, you put the whole quote well, everything. everything. And you, you basically give them like option A, B, C, D. If you look at some of Donovan, you'll see that it'll have everything line item out. And then if they want to take a line item out, that's fine. They, they can take that line mm -hmm. item out. But we're going to give them all options. You know, we want to give this house here, you gave a $900 option. On a house like this, we want to give a $1,500 option. If we don't get, if we only give them a nine hundred dollar, and that's the most we ever give them. Right. Well, that's the most you're ever gonna get. Mm -hmm. But if I give them a fifteen hundred or two thousand dollar with Christmas lights, I'm giving them a three thousand dollar offer. Guess what? They're gonna take a. Th they, there's people dumb enough to pay three thousand dollars for Christmas. Well, they pay for what they want. Right. If they want it, they'll pay for it. So um, I don't pay that. But, there's I mean, people yeah. there, but I also don't live in a half a million million dollar house. Either. No. So guys, with this house, like Jason said, with your package A, how many people here do packages now in any way? How many people give discounts with their packages? No. Okay. I, no, used, I, I, used, I used to. I used to. I don't need more because I just paid $7,100 to encapsulate my house. Um, and that's because that joker gave me a discount finally after I said no like 10 times. Finally, give me five percent off. I said I'll do it. <laughs> I was doing it anyway. I just wanted a discount, and I knew he had one. He just didn't give it to me for ten freaking minutes. He was really hardcore. I wanted to hire him. I tried to hire him. I'm gonna try again. Monday when they come to do my house, I'm gonna try to hire him again because he was a good salesman. I mean, a good one. He had you sold, but not on this. Oh, he was sold on number one. He was sold at the word go. I was done. I I knew I was buying from this guy. It wasn't a question in my mind. I didn't care what it cost. I knew I was buying from this guy. He sold me from the word go. He had all his ducks in a row and had it laid out. But here's what I want to get you to think. If you do the package A and you don't offer the gutter clean out, and now everybody don't do gutter brightening, I'm telling you what I do. I offer everything I offer. Gutter clean out, gutter brightening, we do install gutter guards. If I clean your gutters out, guess what price you're getting? A gutter guard installation. Not everybody don't do that. But I'm gonna offer it because I do. So you gotta offer what you offer in every facet of that sale. Anything you can give the customer, give them. So how many people in here uh, seal driveways or walkways or patios already? Are we offering it every time we get a paper job? Every time. If you're not, and you believe what you offer is the best, you are being a disservice to your customer. Because I've got something they need, and I didn't give it to them. I had a buddy of mine that ran a power wash and soft wash business. The reason why he didn't offer it is because he said it was taking business away from his own business. No. Well, he's insane. Yeah, that's the <laughs> he, he said, I was like, why don't you Yeah, that's the dumbest thing. <laughs> thing <laughs> like, I wanted to call me back in four or five years to come do it again. Call me back? Man, if I don't seal the papers, I'm washing them every year right. for $180. And I can seal it for $3,000? Dude, chalk me up for the three grand. I'll wash it three years. <laughs> I'm good with that. Yeah. All day long. Yeah, his math don't work. Yeah. 
Yeah, basic math disputes all that. Yeah, that's that's insane. Like I don't know who all goes to this video, but somebody learned that ain't good math. That's bad math. <laughs> 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 no, no, <laughs> math is you under math that you want to be. But guys, in all honesty, if and here's here's what I want you to know: those that do give discounts, who gives discounts? Chris, him, I was giving discounts. Y'all give discounts. All right, so listen to the discounts. So if you offer the gutter brightener and the gutter clean out, and you make an extra $150 to $200 on the line item that you don't have, and you give the discount, did you make more money by increasing your items? If we increased your items by giving a $100 extra porch clean that you didn't charge and has never charged, and you're gonna give $50 off anyway, you're going to give the 50 off or the 75 or whatever it is. If you add two or three more line items on services you already offer, you just made more money. And you're going to do a discount anyway. And you're going to do a discount anyway. But here's where it gets interesting. Okay, you ready? I do a lot of services. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through my services. So if I did this with 32 windows, 200 foot on gutters, 2,000, and 10 on that, I'm gonna offer concrete ceiling at a minimum of a dollar a foot on driveway. I'm gonna offer gutter guard installation. I'm gonna offer gutter clean out, gutter brightening, window cleaning, concrete cleaning. I'm gonna look for any drop of rust anywhere. And that's a $200 immediate upcharge for me. Bam, that's 200 bucks if I see rust. And I'm gonna offer, it's on here. You see it says rust removal. I'm gonna look for oil. I'm going to look for anything I can look for to add another line item. And when you do that, and you've got seven or eight line items on here, by the time you get down to yours, and I'm at package C, and it's a house wash and a gutter brightener and a concrete job, three items, you got four, and you give it no discount, and you're making more money than you made right there. Because if you're going to give discounts, you got to add line items. So when you get to package C, and it's the generic wash, I'm still making more money because my discounts step down. Because if you're only doing three to four things and you give a discount, you're shooting yourself in the foot. Add five or six things, like he was talking about on this. Well, the picture Well, he was talking about his picture. Add the trees, add the bushes, add the ground lighting. Add the gutter, the gutter trim, the, the A root, add the dormers. Add everything you can because if they choose package C, you want it to still be up here. And you don't want to start down here and then step down. Does that make sense? The more you add, the more you can take off and still make good money. The less you start with, and then if you take one or two off, you're making nothing. So, Chris, where would you be at on a house like that when you just... There. I had to have a phone. Give me some, give me some math, right? Because here's the thing: what's your average ticket, Chris? Right now, hand, will you hand me my notebook, Chris? Right there. Hand me that note. Bring it to me real quick, bud, if you don't mind. Um, all right. So here's. So I'm gonna go over this, and then I will uh, go over some stuff with y'all. So. My close rate this year through Friday um, is 63%. My close rate last month was 65%. That was September now, 65% close rate. My close rate in the last seven days was 86%. My average ticket last year was $925. My average ticket right now is 1514. That's 2022? Yeah. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's What's it going to be in 2023? 2000. Hey, Y'all need to keep, keep this language PG. He's recording this, all right? So we got to come through and beef it all out. So, <laughs> so thank you, Dolan. That was great. That was inspirational. Y'all didn't get motivated back, did it? <laughs> Tell me. That boy right here, he's come a long way. <laughs> he's come a long way. Hey, 
My profit <coughs> margins this year are at one hundred and twelve thousand five hundred dollars. Yes. That's my profit. He said, he said yes. That's my profit. <laughs> keeping it PG. Keeping it PG. Yes, star, 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 star. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's gonna turn into a, yes. <laughs> I've, I've discounted this year. I had to give discounts. I did fifteen percent, ten percent, five percent. That was my. Say that again, please. I did 15%, 10%, and 5% discounts on my packages. Yeah, A, B, and C. Up until I met the guy that's encapsulating my house. From the day I met him, I've not offered another discount unless it was the last straw and I knew they were getting up from the table. And I said, well, what if I sweeten the pie? Oh, so that's what you, he did you. Yes, sir. You learned from yourself. Yeah, Because yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I knew he had one. Right. His first offer to me, you want to know how much his first offer was to encapsulate my house? Yeah. 18000 yep. I got him down to 7100 because I'm a salesman too. Yeah. Wait, so, so and you, then he gave me the discount, and that's the, what got me to seventy one. You cut the whole quote in half? Yes, I did. So and got everything except <laughs> one thing. I got everything but one thing, and he called his manager to give him permission. He, now, he didn't know he was dealing with his last A salesman too. He didn't know that. I'm sure he knew. We well, probably did by the time he left. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I mean, I had the owner. I had the owner of the company on the phone with him and me on speaker, negotiating the price. And I said, I'm going to buy today if you get to this number. He said, Well, we'll get there. I'll give you five percent off. But I had. To, I I do. I did a lot of negotiating. It was a very hard core both sides sell, and I wanted to push this guy because I knew he was good. I knew he was good out the gate. I wanted to see how good I was. And you didn't sacrifice anything that you wanted? Just one thing that I didn't know was even an offer. And I was like, that's really cool. I really want that. It was like four inch underground drainage. And I was like, God, that would be really cool. <laughs> I don't need it, man. I'm good. <laughs> but, but guys, what I'm getting you to understand is you got to ask for these things. Is that your wife? I hope so. She, hey, okay, listen, I don't know. That's why I asked him. Why did you marry him? Because he asked him. What if he had never asked her to marry him? Now, I want you to think about it. What, what if he had never asked her? Guess what? She wouldn't be here today. That's right. If you never ask the question and present everything you can offer, you're not going to get the response because they don't even know it's available. You gotta ask the questions. So we're gonna go over this last thing and then I'll be done and I'm gonna give Jason uh, the floor back because I like listening to them fellas and uh, I like watching y'all from behind because it's cool watching all y'all squirm when you ask y'all to get on TV. <laughs> <laughs> I love getting on TV. Does he need my calculator? No, I'm, I will roll with it. All right. that, that, that ticket that we just went over with me would be somewhere around $3,800 to four grand. Minimum. With an 87% close rate. Yeah. So Chris started sealing. So every time you see a paper, you better give a seal job price. Or every time you clean concrete. Every time you clean concrete, we offer sealer. And, and man, listen, I'm telling you, even if they don't take it, your next package is still as high as what yours was last week and you didn't get nothing from it. So you still made a better deal. So... Guys, you got to offer it. Now, how exactly do you do your packages? Like, right there, he showed you right there. So, package A, B, and C's, listen, I stair step them down, but use, I'll give you a little secret, okay? Here's a little secret for me. When you do your packages, your package, now Jason's is different than mine. He puts his biggest one in the middle. I don't do that. Well, that was just that picture. Oh, okay. you're, you're telling secrets even if it's the Okay, listen, when I do my package B, now, who knows what package we want them to, to who, what do we want them to sign up with? Hey, we want the rock star package. I want the premier deal, baby, 10 grand. That's what I want. So guess what I'm going to do with package B? I'm going to make it very, very, very unappealing. Because you know what? I heard you tell me, Brandon, when we come up, that cleaning your windows for your wife was a very big deal, and the last guy didn't. Guess what's not on package B? Them windows. <laughs> the windows. 
Guess what's not on package C? The window. The window. And he's like, well, dude, I really need the windows. Okay, well, I got them in package A. <laughs> package B is not going to be very inviting. And I've even structured my package B's to where they're less than a hundred dollar difference than package A. It's like, why would you? You'd be dumb to choose package B. Why would you choose? Why package do you go? B? Why do you go to the popcorn? Why do you go to the cinema and go to the popcorn? Yeah. And you can get the medium for it's like fifty cents less. Yeah, than that large. yeah. The medium's eight dollars and the large is eight fifty. Well, give me the large. <laughs> they're all the same amount. You ain't dumb. I mean, I am for buying eight dollar yeah, popcorn. So. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, that so that's how you got to think it. about it, right? So when you go to your car and sit down to do your quotes, you got to literally do the math. Even on the landscape, do the math. You may have to do it two or three different ways, real quick. You're there to serve the customer for your benefit. I'm not there to serve the customer and give the greatest deal so I lose money. If that was the case, I'd have .org on the back of my name, not .com. I'm in business to make money. I give donations. We give away once a month a, a full house wash. We just give one away that would have been 3800 to four grand. I just give it to a customer. I just give it to her because she couldn't afford me. And I knew she could. And we donate once a month. I donate a free house wash to somebody that has a need. They can't afford us. Their grass is high. They're elderly. Their car ain't been moved in six months and it's got 14 inches of algae on it, and I know they'll never buy my business. I give it to them for free. I go look for them and I give it to them. This lady's squalling on the, on the camera. I got the video, I can show you. We give away, but when I'm working to make money, I'm working to make money. It's that simple. Can you so, it? How you get to 3,400? Well, yeah, it'd probably be way more than that. So, okay, so I can go through it. So write down my numbers right here, okay? And I'm just going to do my basic, general, bottom dollar stuff, and I'll show you how I get there. Right? And he needs to raise his prices, because I already told him. <laughs> I'm going to give you the price I do now. I'm the cheapest guy in the room. I promise you. Roof treatment. Well, yeah, it needs a roof wash. So do your phone. Well, let's do it y'all's way so y'all know basic math. 2,000 square foot times 40 cents. For which one, the roof? Yep. So that's All right, so that's an $800 roof wash I would offer. If there's any black line whatsoever, it don't have to be but one foot long because or six inches. If I can see it, I'm selling a roof wash. All right, so 32 times five. All right, 32 times five. <clears throat> no, that ain't right. That ain't right. right no, that ain't right. Number. <laughs> 160. Clean out. 200, 200 feet of gutters. I charge a dollar fifty a foot for gutter clean out. Two fifty a foot. <coughs> yeah. Three hundred dollars. And then I charge on gutter brightening. I charge a dollar twenty five a foot. So that's two hundred fifty. I can do the math for you. I know what it is. Clean. That's that. A dollar fifty right. clean out. So they don't have a deck. They don't. So a one. two thousand square foot house is vinyl side one story, twelve cents a square foot. No, you got to clear all that out. 240. 240 on the house wash. Yeah, you're cheap. That's why I know I'm cheap. Let, just hold on. <laughs> Art of concrete's 2,000 square foot. Uh, 17 uh, cent a foot. Times 0.17. 340. He's going to make a lot of money coming out of this place. He's going to raise the price of 87% close to it. Yeah. And then 10 windows. We charge 100 for the screen porch. Just write down a hundred dollars on it. We know what it's for. <clears throat> and now I'm gonna offer gutter guard installation. It's two hundred foot of gutters at eighteen dollars a foot. Thirty-six hundred. Thirty-six hundred, just for my gutter guards. All right. So add all that together. That's more money than Brandon knows how to even count. I know. I can't count that. Uh, Thing Chris, is, Chris is going to get into gutter guards. Um, so this is good for you too. Oh, she said not. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll see. When you get another man or two, honestly, when you get another man or two, that's when you pull the trigger on that. That way you got two men on ladders and doing, you know what I mean? So you're at 57. 
dollars. I would sell that today, today, right now, with no discount, and I would land that job eight out of ten times. <clears throat> wow. That's not being fun. And here's the deal: with package uh, B, I know the raindrops are a super expensive thing. I know they are. <clears throat> I offer no interest financing for four payments, four easy, four easy installments. That's what the TV taught me. Four easy installments. <laughs> You know what I mean? $1,100 and I'm at 55. I'm good with that. I'm okay with that. If you Roll call right now, I'll also include the Sham Wow Mini. <laughs> 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 so, next time you you and a free yard sign. A free yard sign. There you go. If you were doing that, you would have ended up offering paver treatment. If they had paver treatment in the driveway, yeah. I'd offer the driveway seal. So, a driveway seal at 2,000 square yeah, foot at a dollar a foot, that's 2,000 more. That's a $7,800 price tag. Yeah. If I take the, the, the gutter guards off and I still get the seal job, listen in, Chris, the seal job, the gutter guard, the gutter brightening, the gutter clean out, the roof wash, I still left <clears throat> with four times more than you started with. Yeah. That is what makes the total difference. That's crazy. Here's something that Chris does, and we're going to talk about putting them online. Chris, Chris spoke to them in person. What we're saying is that we want to give every client the chance to pay us premium. Yes. Okay? We don't want to assume that this client doesn't want nice things in their life, right? So we're saying, look, here's a basic package of what kind of, you know, here's a minimum thing that you could do if that's what you want, and here's also the best of the best of the best. You know, what would you like? A lot of people want the best. There you go. She don't shop at Walmart. And a lot of business owners don't. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you she don't. I promise you she don't either. I promise you. Unless it's groceries, baby, she ain't going <laughs> yeah, to buy her pants Walmart. Walmart. I'm telling you. She don't either. Yes, I do. Uh, <laughs> no, we do. Chris, no. Yeah, we do. I, I don't. <laughs> we don't shop at Walmart. I'm not going to Walmart now. unless I got Chris walking with me too. You know what I mean? Now we listen. don't all have Chris. Everybody you meet is not your customer. That's <coughs> what you got to get through your head. I'm not trying to sell every person that calls me a job. I don't want them to have my number. Half of them. I don't. I don't care if they ever hear me. But I'm going to treat them the same way I treat the million dollar customer because this joker right here has an aunt that will use me. You have a mom that may use me or a coworker or a sister or brother. So treat them all the same, but understand going in, he's not my customer, she is. He's her husband and if she calls me, when I get there, I'm not focused on him because she's the one who wants to work done. So I'm gonna get them both sat down together at the kitchen table. She's been nagging at him and for I'm, two months yeah. trying to get it done. And I'm gonna talk to her, and I'm gonna just sporadically make eye contact with him so he knows I'm talking to him, but she's the one I want to love me. Because if she wants it, he'll do it. If I go in and she called me and I'm talking to him and I totally ignore her, it ain't happening. It's not gonna happen, it's not gonna happen. You done it, it's over. Because he don't give a rip. He didn't want to clean to start with. <laughs> she does. And we're always going in talking to the wrong one. And then when you get there and there's nobody there that makes the decision, and you feel like, man, I just wasted 40 minutes of my life. Because who makes the decision is not here. That's why I try to get both at the same time at the kitchen table, and I'm going to be there for about 30, 40 minutes. And we're going to have a good time. We're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about that. Five minutes. And for 25 minutes, I'm going to talk about her coat. I'm going to talk about her diamond ring. I'm going to talk about her husband and his boat outside I saw. I'm going to talk about the grandkids I saw on the wall when I walked in. And I'm going to get them really, really enjoying my company. And then I'm going to talk about this right before I go to leave. And I'm going to get a 20% discount on anything over $500 every time I walk out of the house. <laughs> every space. time. Uh, say your phase has changed. We've said that. I get 20%. Anything over $500, I get a 20% upfront, upfront deposit non-refundable. 
Yeah, you Anything said over yes, how much? No, yeah, no, no. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's why my face was like, <laughs> yeah. no, I mean, pause it. So pause. Because I want to know that I'm locked in and I want to know they're serious. I don't want Donna to tell me yes and then she call me in three weeks and say, well, me and Chris changed our mind. Well, okay, but you just lost $800 because you give me a deposit. It's non refundable. I had to tell one customer that and I'm dogmatic on it. I have zero compassion, none. Yeah. I have zero compassion on giving a refund when you committed to me verbally I hold you to your commitment you committed to do this you could have told me no and I would have walked out you said yes and give me a deposit it is non-refundable well if they move that, well now I mean I ain't never had anybody do that in like two weeks but we're booked out two weeks now if you're booked out three months that might be a problem Hey, what, hey, listen. Are you looking for a pressure washing company if you know you're going to move? You don't need yeah. To move. Well, some people hire me when they move because they yeah. want to sell it. And I tell them I can make them an extra 20 grand. Mm -hmm. If they'll pay me four, I can make them 20. They make 16 grand <laughs> if I give me four. That's a fact, Jack. <laughs> y'all y'all tell I love this. So let's look at the marketing. And this is a sales sheet that's marketing. I want you to see I am fully transparent. I'm an open book. I'm on camera, my wife's probably having a stroke. Like, you're giving them your marketing numbers? Yes. Guys, I want you to look down through here, and I want you, you've got 2021 versus 2022. So you've got two papers. So let's look at the five round. And so, you know, this year I'm at 16. Last year I was at 11. This year out of the 16, I'm at 21,632 because we go knock on the neighbor's door when we get there. What's five round? A five round is when you're cutting the grass, you go talk to the neighbor beside, the neighbor beside, and the three across the road. I get it now. That makes sense. Every time. And if you don't get an answer today and you're going back next week to cut the same grass, when you load your lawnmower up, <coughs> give yourself five minutes to go knock on them same five doors again. Repetitive routines win. Just us. Because they, over time, they would just say, you know what, Andrew, there's Andrew coming again. Andrew, you know we ain't ready to buy. I know, Paul, but you won't get me one day. Maybe I'll see you next week. Oh, yeah. And roll on. And eventually, Paul's going to say, Andrew, come here. You ain't even going to have to go to him. He's going to say, man, I fired that Jack Lee work for me. You come do my yard. That's how it works, guys, relationship building. I was going to say, last, last so, week I had to cut the grass at my, my house. And I couldn't because my lawnmower was down. And I literally saw... Like the neighbors gotta come up, and I was like, if they ask me, I'll tell them, please <laughs> there do we it. Go. <laughs> but I was already fixing the lawnmower. All I had to do was ask me. I'll be like, yeah, because I still had to order parts. There you go. Like, That's my that rule for Girl Scout cookies. You you know, know. If they got a little table set up, I won't buy them. They have to ask me. They have to. Like, ask That's me. my rule. Yeah, they yeah. have to ask me. And one time, I really wanted some fucking cookies, so I walked past like five times. <laughs> he <laughs> failed. But I was like, I was like. Ask me, and then they say yes. I said yes, I do. I want my box. <laughs> you said it so far backwards off of your stand while ago. What did I say? I'm not repeating it, sir. And it was not. You said the F as he would say over here. I never would have said that. <laughs> you, said, you, said you regurgitated it, man. Hey, so listen. So flyers this year we're at at fifteen thousand, and we got nine hundred and thirty-seven dollars average ticket. But I want you to look at the ones down here. So go down lower, look at our prior customers on line 13. Yeah. What year are you on? Line 13, either one. Um, look at either year you want to. Well, they're line 13 is two different. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, line 15 on 2021. So it looks like, oh yeah, I was analyzing the prior customer sheet for this year. It looks like you converted 25% from last year. That's yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. Well, a lot of people say 50% is a good conversion rate. I think more like 30 because some of the customers I watched last year I don't want back some of them move and I raise my prices to I want to weed out all low paying people okay. over time you got to weed it's like calling oysters I want selects I don't want the whole cluster I want the cream of the crop and the more years you coil your customers and you raise your prices and you bump them the lower fruit that's not your fruit will fall off, it'll organically just fall off. And that's what you want because three to four or five years into your business, you want the solid fruit. You want the fans that are gonna talk about you. You want the people that's gonna call you back every year, spend eight grand on Christmas lights. 
You don't want that dude that wants just his front porch wrapped in Christmas lights. That's not who you want to talk to. So you've got to coil that every year or call it. I say coil. Call it. Um, now look at the referrals. I want to show you all the referrals. So prior customers are $47,000, $86,800 average ticket <coughs> last year. This year prior customers, $44,000. $74,600 average ticket. Look at the referrals. Guess where I get referrals from? Other customers. Other customers. Prior customers. Get Look at the referrals last year. 39. We had a $1,000 average ticket from referrals. Look at this year. 102,000. $2,300 average ticket. My average ticket more than doubled this year on referrals. People on referrals. Y'all see that? I doubled, I more than doubled my average ticket. You here's, the number of referrals. Okay. Yeah, here's why. Here's why. We have perfected our art. I want to show you something on this. I just had like a, like this. We made $433,000 and we only had one website visit. Yeah, yeah, was like yeah one. But I thought the website, we had to have a website that you, the website was gonna make me all this money. No, my Google ad is all, I mean, it does it. LSA, my LSA's, that's all run. That's all run. I don't even run Google ads. I run LSA's, that's it. I might have a stupid question. Local service ads. No, it's, no, it's, it's Google. You gotta get Google guaranteed and all kind of stuff. Go ahead, Miss Bonnie. Um, it looks like you dropped some things because in 2021, you've got 25 items, and then you've got 21 methods that you used in 2022. Was there certain things that just didn't work at all that you didn't do again? Yeah. Um, like where it says campaign at the top? Yeah. I dropped that off because that was no, because that was what we would do with, with HOAs. I would go in and I would call it a campaign, and I would say if we can get 50 houses, I'll do them at a very discounted rate. Gotcha. And even though we won that three or four times, I didn't like the revenue side of it. Okay. So I, I cut that off. I said, we ain't doing campaigns no more. Gotcha. And so we went through and you see like door to doors gone. Right. So I don't, I don't do door to door sales. I call it a card handout is okay. what it is. If I see you at the gas pump, I hand you a card. Okay. That's, we don't do door to door marketing. I do flyers in driveways right. and that's under flyers. Okay. But door to door was literally when I used to walk door to door, door, door and door. knock on it and I would give them a, I mean, I literally did that gotcha. for eight hours a day. Right. And so we don't do that anymore. Okay. So meet and greet is, is when I get invited to a birthday party, um, any kind of, uh, where there's 10 or more people and I can meet eight or 10 people at a time. If I win one of those, that's a meet and greet. And so I do that a lot. Like I give cards to everybody I meet. We go to a social gathering, a birthday party, a wedding. Dude, I love a wedding. I, I, I mean, funerals are a bad place to do it, but I do it. If I'm there, I'm telling you. Listen, tell me. Somebody's got to watch the house. Put the coffin up on the coffin on their forehead in their mouth so they got pulled out of their mouth. I'm not even going to have to sit at Jimmy's house now. If you want to clean. He gets a little car holder and puts it around the top of the coffin. So, so the, the meet and greet was $10,000 average ticket and we had five. That's because sometimes in birthday parties, sometimes if they're having a party at their house, she's going to have friends that I'll never meet anywhere else. He's going to have friends that I'll never meet. And so when you're at that function, if you'll take that opportunity, to meet them. Hey man, I'm Chris from Rivertown Pro Wash. If you ever need us, call us. I mean, if we can help you in any way other than that, just let me know. It's not about selling my product to them. I just want to get them a card in their hand and tell them, hey, I'm here for you. If you ever need us, call us. And if you need me outside of work, call me, man. I'll help you any way I can. And when you do that, man, you never know who the mayor is. I mean, you never know. He may be from another town. It may be the lawyer, one of the biggest lawyers in Vermont just happened to move to Myrtle Beach and he just happened to know this girl and he just bought a 10,000 square foot house. I don't know. So that's how that number is huge because that literally gets me some big work at meet and greets. 
You just don't know who you're meeting. I want to give everybody more. I have another question. How do you keep track of separating all this? So th this is in my CRM, a customer uh, relation management system um, that I use. And if you don't have a CRM, I will put a plug in for that. You need one. Does anybody not know what a CRM is? Okay, okay, but get you one of those and get a good one because this is where I get these numbers. I can pull any report I need for average tickets, close rates, marketing, spend, anything I got, I can get out of that CRM. If you document it. Yeah, you got to put it in. You got to put the information in. Yeah, it don't help. Yeah, it's like service So I want to show y'all yard signs because I know he talks about money bushes and this will be the last thing I'll do and then I'll be done. They don't work, right? No, they suck. So yard signs, $60, last year we did 55 customers for 46,848 average ticket. This year, 57 customers, $60,000. So we got a $1,000 average ticket off of yard signs. And I've had people tell me that they don't do yard signs because they don't want the customer that it draws. That's great. <laughs> yeah, I'll take them. I'll take them. I'll take them all day long. I love them. That's all I got, guys. Oh, Thank well. you for your time. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you have another one for Here's one for 2022. Here it is. You got one? Okay. Yeah, Thank you. All right. Take, are you done? Yes. Take, take um, let's see, it is 140. We'll start back at 150. So take nine minutes. Good job. Good job, Chris.